Hello again, welcome to the Mixed Reality Masterclass. My name is Toge, and in this episode, we're going to carry on our look at a pro workflow for mixed reality with Liv. Picking up from where we left off in episode three with filming, this episode will be an introduction to the post-production side. We'll be covering the full dive manual composition process using Liv Dump Mode and your separately recorded camera footage. If you don't want to go to all that effort, I'll also show you my fast dump mode method for quick and easy production, all using Adobe Premiere Pro. All of that and more in episode four of the Mixed Reality Masterclass post-production. By now, you would have wrapped filming and have a bunch of video files from Liv and perhaps your real camera too, that you're ready to edit into an epic mixed reality video. But first things first, we'll need to do a little bit of housekeeping as these projects can get quite complex with files all over the place in nested multi-layer compositions. It's important to start with a little organization so you don't lose track later. In File Explorer, we'll need to create a folder structure for the project with an assets folder containing separate folders for your live files and camera files, if you have them. Move the files into their respective folders and then go through renaming each of these files to match what is shown on the slate at the start of each video. I like to start with a shot number and then a very short description followed by a designator for whether the file contains live footage or camera footage. There's no rules with this though. Do whatever works best for you. It's just important to get everything in an order you can follow first before you start editing. Over to Adobe Premiere Pro now and we'll create a new project. Then from the project location dropdown, we'll choose that project folder we just created. Give the project a name, then click create. Now just note for this video, I'm using the effects workspace up here. In your assets folder in File Explorer, we're going to select the folders containing our video files and drag them into our media browser in Premiere. And with all of that done, you should have a well-organized project to start creating your video. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to cover two different methods for editing with live dump mode footage, a fast method, as well as the full dive manual composition. The initial process for both of these methods is the same though. So start with dragging one of your live videos out onto the timeline to create a new sequence. Give this sequence a name, then we're going to right click on it and go to sequence settings. In here, change the frame size to 1920 by 1080, then hit OK. And without doing any other edits, right click on the video and we're going to nest it. Give it a name, probably starting with the shot number and hit OK. Now double click on this nest and you'll find the video inside, but looking a bit strange because it's just the center part of live dump mode. For your initial edit, you'll want to use the live composite part of dump mode. So over to the effect controls panel and we're going to adjust the position to zero, zero. Back to your main sequence now, and if you have multiple shots, you can drag them onto this sequence and repeat the nesting and position steps for each. It's at this point you'd carry out your initial edit, but that's not the focus of this video. I'd really like to go super deep on my editing process in some other videos, but this video is just to focus on the composition of these shots. For the composition process, I'm going to begin by showing my fast dump mode method as it's probably the best place to start from in understanding this process. Inside your nested shot, hold Alt, then click and drag the video up onto the next track to create a duplicate, making sure it remains in sync. On the bottom layer, go to the effect controls panel and adjust the position to 1920-0. That's going to be our background layer. Now it's just as simple as selecting the top layer and in the effect controls panel, creating an opacity mask around the subject. You'll notice we can use this to mask out parts of the live composition and they'll be replaced by the background layer underneath. This process is called creating a garbage mat. Very similar to creating a static mask for live, but much faster and it can also work with a moving camera. If your shot is static, you'll just need to create a garbage mat once. But if your shot has a moving camera, then toggle animation on the mask path and scroll your way through the video adjusting the garbage mat as needed. And that's it. That's the fast method. Background layer on the bottom, live composite on top with a garbage mat. Simple? Next, we'll get into the full dive manual composition process. If you're new to Premiere and After Effects, 
This is going to get a little heavy, but stick with me and we'll get through this together. The initial edit process is the same, but how each shot is composited inside these nests will be very different. I'll briefly explain what the composition will look like, then we'll go through how we get there. Similar to the fast method, on the bottom we'll have a background layer. Above this will be our real camera footage, with both chroma key and a garbage mat applied. Then above this we'll have our first foreground layer, which is additively blended. Then the foreground again, but this time multiplied by our alpha key, and then subtractively blended. Then above this we have a foreground mask, created from our camera footage. Now there's a lot going on there, so I'm going to break it down step by step. The first thing we need to consider is that we now have raw green screen footage from our real camera that does not have any chroma key applied. So step one will be to sort that out. Now there's two main ways you could approach this. You could use the ultra key effect within Premiere Pro, but my preference is to switch to After Effects for this step and use Key Light. It's a much more powerful tool than Ultra Key, especially with suboptimal green screen and lighting setups like mine. If you can make Ultra Key work for your setup, that's great, but I'm going to go ahead and switch to After Effects for this step. So create a new project and bring in all of your camera footage. Right click on your first video and create new comp from selection. Now over in the Effects and Presets tab, if you type Key Light, you will find an animation preset that contains three effects. Key Light, Key Cleaner, and Advanced Spill Suppressor. I'm going to go ahead and drop that on my clip, and then simply set the screen colour here with the eyedropper. I like to use Control plus click on the eyedropper, as it will average the colours from a slightly wider area. Now straight away you can see that's removed some of the green screen, but looks a little broken, because there's one important step missed. Because I'm shooting in a log colour profile on my camera, I need to do a little colour correction first. So I'll just undo that screen colour, then do a search for Lumetri, and we'll drag Lumetri colour to the top of our effect controls. At this stage, I'm just going to add an input LUT, which will do a simple correction to Rec 709, and maybe just up the exposure a touch. I'll now redo that screen colour with Control click with the eyedropper and we're starting to look a bit better. For now, I'll disable Key Cleaner, then come up to the View dropdown in Key Light and select Status. This is an exaggerated view of the alpha, which is useful for fine tuning our key. The two parts of Key Light that are going to do most of the work here are under Screen Mat, Clip Black and Clip White. Starting with Clip Black, raise that up until all of this gray noise on the green screen is gone. Then with Clip White, Roll this back until your subject has no grey inside and has a clean edge. At this point, it's a good idea to check a bunch of different frames in your video to make sure these settings hold up. If that's all good, you can set the view back to intermediate result and enable key cleaner if you need it and advanced spill suppressor. From here, you might need to do some fine tuning, but at the risk of this video being hours long, I'd like to recommend a really great video from Jake in Motion where he goes through these three keying tools in great detail. If you'd like to learn more, I've left a link to this video in the description. With the key done, we're ready to send this back to Premiere. But because these effects are so resource intensive, I actually like to pre-render these videos in a way that includes the alpha key. This will make everything run much faster in Premiere. To do this, go to File, Export, then Add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. Click on the format to open Export Settings. Then in the Format drop-down, we'll choose QuickTime. Now under Video Codec, change this to Animation. Then scroll to Depth, and we'll change this to 8 BPC plus Alpha. Up to Output Name now, click on the path, and save this in a new folder under your Assets folder inside the project. You may now wish to save these export settings as a preset here, so they can be easily applied to future clips. Hit OK now, then hit the green play button in Media Encoder, and wait, a long time. The render time here will be quite long, and the file size will be huge, so you may wish to leave this for a while and come back when it's done. When all of your pre-rendered files are ready, you can drag that new folder you created into Premiere and begin compositing. Here's where having a good file naming convention will start to make sense, as I'll mainly be referencing the shot number on each of these clips, and it's about to get busy. 
Inside your nested sequence now, you should have just the one live file set to position 00, zero showing the live composite. Firstly, we're going to right click on this and select unlink to separate the video from the audio. Now find the corresponding pre-rendered camera footage and drag this out onto the timeline. We'll repeat the unlink step on this clip too, but this time we'll delete the audio. Now we'll need to get this camera footage in sync with the live file. To do this, scrub around near the start of the camera footage, looking for the slate. We need to find the frame where the clapper stops, and then trim the clip down to start on this frame. Then on the live clip, find this frame where the clapper stops, then drag the camera footage up to track 2 to start at this same frame. Now scrub through your footage and check that everything remains in sync throughout. If you didn't get your live latency correct while filming, you'll now have an opportunity to correct this by nudging the camera footage back or forward a frame or two. Look for any moments with fast hand movements and make sure any handheld objects stay attached, then adjust as necessary. Next we'll create a garbage mat for the camera footage. And just like with the fast method from earlier, we'll do this with an opacity mask. Having the live composite under the camera footage can actually be pretty useful for this process, so you can see the parts of the camera footage that are being discarded. So because this process can be quite time consuming, you'll only want to do this on the parts of the shot you're actually using, not the entire shot. Once your garbage mat is finished, you're ready to continue building the comp. Select the live track on the bottom and we'll change its position to 1920, zero, which is the background layer. Now hold Alt, then click and drag to duplicate this clip up to track three, above the camera footage. We'll change the position of this one to the foreground layer, which is position 1920, 1080. Then Alt click drag the foreground again up to track four, and we'll make this position 0, 1080. This will be our alpha for the foreground. Nest both of these clips individually, giving them a name starting with the shot number, followed by FG for foreground, and then alpha. With Premiere, it's important that we nest these clips so the effects we'll be applying shortly will work properly. Now select both of these nests, then Alt click drag up just one track. So you have two FG layers with the alpha layer on top for a total of five layers. On the bottom FG layer, go ahead and change its blend mode to linear dodge add. This is that additive blend mode that will make parts of the foreground appear to light up our subject. Next, hop over to the effects and search for track matte key, then drag this onto the top FG layer. In the effects controls for the track matte, we'll change the matte to video five, which should be the alpha key in the track directly above this one. Then composite using matte luma. Hold shift and select both the top FG layer and the alpha key. Then we'll right click, nest this again, giving it a name starting with the shot number followed by FG top. Then on this new nest, we'll use the subtractive blending mode, darken. Okay, we're getting close to done now. The last thing we need to do is mask these two foreground layers with the camera footage. And just a reminder that it's important that you have finished your garbage mat before you get to this step. Alt click and drag your camera footage to the very top, being sure that it remains in sync. Then over to the effects panel again, search for alpha adjust, then drag this effect onto the top layer of camera footage. In the effect controls for alpha adjust, tick the box for mask only. This will create a mask we can use for our foreground layers. Again, search for track matte key and drag this effect onto both foreground layers. For both of these, we'll choose video five as the matte, which is that foreground mask we just created and composite using Matt Luma. And you're done. That's the basics for manual composition from Live Dump Mode. You might be thinking that is a lot of work for something that really only matches what the standard Live Comp is already doing, but it's what you can do next that really makes the difference. You now have full control to make your subject appear as though they're really part of the scene and not just on a green screen. And that's where the real fun begins and the real power of this manual process lies. But all of that is to come in some future videos. I hope you learned something from this. It's a lot of work to put these together, so if this has been helpful to you, I'd appreciate if you left a like on the video, as it really helps me out. 
and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you have any questions about anything I've covered, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. You can also reach me on Discord by following the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time. If you have any questions about anything of uh.